Lovely. Uh, welcome to uh, Planning, uh, Planning West. Uh, my name is Justin Kerridge. I'm the chair. Uh, in front of me are the members, uh, the council of members of the committee, and to my left and right, officers of the council, who I shall ask to introduce themselves. Thank you, Thank you Chairman. Liz Javorska, Committee Services. Mason Ash, Legal Services. <coughs> Uh, Dale Barker, I'm a planning manager. In my role as an impartial advisor to the committee, I can clarify any planning issues that arise. Doing so, I'm bound by the Code of Professional Conduct of the Royal Town Planning Institute. Planning committee members are not bound by the case officer's recommendation or by any oral advice. Victoria Chadaway, Senior Planner. David Millinship, Planner. Sean Gardner, Assistant Planner. Uh, thank you. Um, <clears throat> just draw members' attention to the fact that there is an update sheet, uh, quite a brief one today. So if we go to the agenda, um, apologies of absence. Thank you, Chairman. We have apologies from Councillors Atkinson, Giles and Payne, with Councillor Fielding substituting for Councillor Giles. Thank you, Councillor. <laughs> okay. Um, any disclosures of interest? Thank you very much. Uh, Email received on application 18-01458. Yes, I've had one of those. I think most of us would have had that. Good. Um, I, I'm the ward member for... Um, the Spurnal Park application, number seven on the agenda. Uh, so I'll, I'll actually, although I haven't um, objected or supported, I will step down. Uh, so we'll need to, to choose a chair at that point to chair that specific um, item. Councillor? Thank you. That's ward member for the Luddington one. Yes. You're stepping down for that? Are you stepping down? Yes, okay, good. Okay, and the minutes. Uh, can I confirm and sign the minutes of the meetings held on the 25th of July and the 15th of August, Councillor? Um, minor thing. Um, on the front page it says apologies and it seems to have omitted my name. I did provide my apologies and they haven't been noted. Okay, which one's that? First page, the 25th of July 18. Okay, that's noted now, Councillor. Okay, great. I don't think we need to vote on it, do we? No, yeah. well, they just need to say yes, really. So, okay. Happy with that? Good. Lovely. So, we'll get straight to the planning applications then. Item number four, um, which is page 13 on the agenda, and it's Hardwick House, and over to Victoria Chadaway, I think. Are there two items that you've got to deal with? Yeah, I've just taken them both together, Councillor. Thank you, Chair. There are updates to this application provided in the update sheet, um, the result of which is that the application is now recommended for a deferral. Right, okay. Uh, so that's been deferred because of a red line issue. Uh, recommended by officers for, for a deferral, I'm, um, I'd propose that, if I can find a seconder for that. Second to Councillor. All those in favour of deferral? Unanimous, Chairman. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, item number five. Uh, Mill House, Stratford Road, Wooden Warren, uh, which is page 27 on the agenda. And this is, we have David here, but uh, uh, he'll be leaving the authority shortly. Thank you very much for being here, and thank you for being here tonight. Uh, but Victoria Chadaway is going to take this one as well. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Planning permission is sought for the demolition of existing stable blocks and the erection of two dwellings across the site. The site is denoted by the black dot, um, and, the, and the site is located within the village of Wooten Wurren. Uh, the site is outlined in red on this slide. Can, is that worth saying? There we go. Okay, yeah. 
the, so the red line there. The pink line denotes the conservation area and the dark red outlines are listed buildings. This is an aerial photo of the site with the red line um, approximately shown um, overlaid on top. Uh, the entirety of the site falls within the green belt and the special landscape area of Arden. These are existing photos of the site. This site, uh, this being the existing stables on the site, open paddock here. This is the view um, from the road of the site over here, and this is open paddock to the north area of the site. These are further existing photos of the site, again from the road, the stables in the site. Uh, the application site falls within the um, village boundary of Wootton Woowen, uh, as defined by the neighbourhood development plan. It falls at the very edge of the boundary, as shown here, with open countryside immediately to the south of the site. This is the proposed uh, housing layout of the site for two dwellings. Um, the first, uh, plot one being approximately where there's an existing stable and uh, plot two being where it's currently open paddock land. Uh, this is um, elevations of the proposed dwellings. Um, the dwellings of a traditional design using um, local brick and of a height of approximately um, 8.75 metres at the highest ridge point. Uh, and this shows the proposed floor plans, and this is a perspective view um, as seen from the open countryside looking into the defined village boundary. Uh, and then finally, this is the existing access to the site. Obviously, it's a crescent-shaped site. The access is over here. Uh, the photo was purposely taken from the driver's seat, so you can see in both directions what the visibility is leading into the site. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so now we will hear from uh, Councillor Mark McCall from Wooden Warren Parish Council, who is supporting the application. Uh, you have three minutes, and I'll tell you half a minute before the end. Good evening. Uh, thank you for letting me uh, come up and say my piece. Um, I think the, the Parish Council would just like to support the application. Um, we feel that it's, it, the design of the building is uh, a good design for the village uh, in keeping with other properties in the area. Um, it's in the village boundary of the neighbourhood plan, which is the crucial thing for us, really. Um, although, it, as the planning officer said it's on the edge of the, the boundary there. Um, it is within the village boundary and that land within that area, as far as the parish council is concerned, has been allocated um, for development potentially. So uh, we think it's a, it is a good place for development within the village. Um, And, yeah, I'd just like to say that we support the application, really. Great. Thank you. Any questions? Councillors? Councillor Barnes? Good evening. We had one in Wooden Worm before. Is it in a sustainable location? Is it? How far is it from Yeah, it's, the it's close to the... It's um, only a few hundred metres from the village centre where they've got the village shop and post office, and it's another... So is it near the railway? Yeah. Uh, it's another... Uh, I don't know, 300 metres uh, yeah, onto okay. the yep. railway station and the school. So, yeah, it's close, close to the village centre. It's closer to the village centre than the affordable homes and things that we've recently put in. So. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, thank you very much. That's great. Okay. Uh, and our next speaker is Mr. Peter Fenton, who is the agent. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, the planning officer states in his report under the heading green belt for the development to be considered as infilling it should be accepted as development on a site between existing built up areas uh, this limitation is not found within the framework 2018 or its predecessor it is not found within core strategy policy cs10 or the supporting text with the greatest of respect this is an unjustified limitation, which is the creation of the planning officer. 
What the core strategy says under policy CS16 housing development is this. The Council is committed to giving local people the opportunity to influence where homes are built in their communities and encourage parish councils to prepare neighbourhood plans that identify sites to meet or exceed housing requirements. Wharton Warwick Parish Council has responded accordingly with a neighbourhood plan that has con complied with the basic conditions to have regard to national policy and be in general accordance with the core strategy. The neighbourhood plan has been made as a statutory development plan by this authority. The approach taken in this neighbourhood plan is to define a built-up area boundary where new housing development is supported in principle within the Green Belt and this proposal is within that boundary. The approach represents the planning judgment of the local community through its neighbourhood plan on infill development and is consistent with national planning policy and the core strategy. Hence, the previous speaker from the uh, Parish Council supports the proposal, and you'll see in your committee report the extract from the consultation which says this development is limited in filling in the village as supported by the neighbourhood plan. For the purposes of the scale of development, the neighbourhood plan is the most relevant part of the development plan. The power given to neighbourhood plans to shape, direct and help deliver sustainable development would, in my opinion, be frustrated if planning permission for development that is consistent with the policies of the neighbourhood plan is denied. The planning judgment, as expressed through the neighbourhood plan, is that limited infill development is achieved by allowing, in principle, new housing development within the built-up area boundary. As you'll see in the committee report, there are no other specific objections to this proposal. So far from being inappropriate development in the Greenbelt, this proposal is consistent with the development plan and planning permission should be granted accordingly, and I so request this committee to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Councillor Richards. Uh, Mr. Frampton, thank you very much for that. Um, can I take it from what you've just said that you do think this is, constitutes limited infill? And, I, and my understanding from what you've just said is on the basis that it, is, it says so in the, um, in the NDP as within the built-up area boundary. And uh, a, se a second question, once you've answered that, if we as a committee are minded not to accept that it's limited infill, what are the special circumstances that you're putting forward that's, that would outweigh any harm that's identified? Right. Okay. Uh, my view is very clear that, no, as I said, no definition of limited infill in national policy, no definition in the core strategy. So what the neighbourhood plan has done as part of the statutory development plan is to interpret Greenbelt policy for limited infilling by drawing a built-up area boundary. And as the policy says, housing development within that boundary will be supported in principle. So supported in principle in accordance with Greenbelt policy. Uh, and that is the view of the Parish Council, but it's their plan, and they're very clear this is limited in field development. In terms of, um, if, if you're not with me on that, and you take the view that it's inappropriate development, you have to give great weight to Greenbelt policy. And you then have to look whether uh, there are benefits from the proposal that outweigh that harm to Greenbelt policy. Now, I haven't presented the application on that basis at all, but in terms of you would give great weight to the, the harm, and there would be harm as a matter of policy, but no harm other than that, in my view, and the planning officer goes through that. It's not open countryside. It's not going to encroach. It doesn't impact on uh, historic buildings, or it doesn't it, it cause sort of enlargement of large urban areas. So the purposes of the Greenbelt policy, it doesn't harm it other than as a matter of policy. Housing coming forward, supported by the Parish Council within the infill development, high quality development, bringing new people into the village, they have to be weighed up with that degree of conflict. But I must emphasise, that isn't my position. My position yeah. is one okay. of compliance. Any other questions? <coughs> Councillor Barnes? Yes, in respect, to the risk, this is an application for two homes. Correct. One is a replacement for what? No, there are two stable buildings, so these are two additional dwellings for the village. Yes, and there's no trees coming down? There are no trees coming down. Yeah, okay. 
Uh, well, it, other than coniferous trees, uh, Lawson cypress trees, which are alien trees, but no indigenous trees are coming down. No, 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 no local native variety. No, none at all. No. Under the neighbourhood plan, what were the number of houses that we're looking for for the development within the village? And does this increase the, the number of houses in the village? Councillor, I think we can get this under technical questions. Any other questions? No? Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, right. Uh, do we have Councillor Lawton here? No? Okay. So we should go to technical questions. Councillor Lawton. The neighbourhood, if you can recall what I said, the neighbourhood plan and the number of houses, does this increase or, de or does it meet the number, total number they wanted in the village? So as far as um, I know, there is no specific number noted in the neighbourhood development plan for a uh, number of dwellings within uh, Wootton Wurren, nor is this site specifically allocated for housing development in the neighbourhood plan. I didn't get, uh, I think it was the numbers, how many, how many numbers should, how many houses should Wootton Wurren be taking? I didn't catch that. I can answer that if you want, Chair. It's written on page 32 of the report. Ah, okay, there you are. Page 32 of the report. So we'll move on. 12% uh, of 700, which yeah. is 84. So that, that, that is in relation to Wootton in itself. That's part of the fact that this is a Category 2 local service village, so you would expect a proportion of that to go into Wootton uh, in itself. But that's not over all of... Yeah. So, Councillor Barnes... Well, I was going to ask, and this is probably not... We had a green belt uh, house, which was a bit bigger than a, a tennis court the other week, and we had a site visit in the end. At, if, if at any point I wanted a site visit, at what point do I ask? Because there seemed to be some confusion. I if you want, I, we'll, we'll have technical questions, and then if you yeah. want to do it in discussion, we can well, raise it Well, it's just that... Yeah. Councillor Vaudry... It's a point of clarification. I, I, it, it appears under Greenbelt policy this wouldn't be permitted unless there's a special circumstances. But the argument from the planning, office, or planning agent was that under the neighbourhood plan, this, this, if you like, would be permitted. Can you just sort of perhaps reiterate the argument on the neighbourhood plan and where you stand precisely on the wording in the neighbourhood plan that may or may not permit this? Okay, so the, the neighbourhood plan follows um, very similar wording to the core strategy in, in how we assess um, green belt development. So um, a, a boundary line was put around the application site, so it defines that as the, the uh, village boundary. Um, in terms of green belt policy, you still have to consider infill development and whether something is considered to be appropriate infill development. The definition of in, um, infill development, there isn't one. Um, so officers have to deal with that on a on a case by case basis, and how we've consistently considered other sites. Um, we have looked at other sites uh, as an authority as a whole, and considered that um, where perhaps there's a something between you know be between two houses or between two built forms, that's infill. When something is directly adjacent to um, open countryside, as is is the case in in this instance we would question whether that is infill. So that's how the officer has reached the recommendation that this isn't considered to be infill development, although it is within the boundary of the neighbourhood uh, as defined in the neighbourhood plan. And just if I may just follow up on that one point, so because you don't define it as infill, you therefore don't think it sort of comes within what's the meaning of the neighbourhood plan language, and therefore that's why you refuse it. Is that just so I'm clear? Yes. Did you want one, Councillor Fielding? You showed us an uh, image of the elevations of the two properties, saying they looked very similar, or they were similar. Then you showed us another image which shows, it looks like timber boarding on the further house. Is that the same design on? I think, though, yeah, this is just one property. So this is uh, plot two. Um, we've only shown the elevations of the one property on the slide. Um, so there would be um, a slight difference between the two with timber cladding proposed on plot one and not on plot two. 
Okay, Councillor Barnes. So are you saying that the design is appropriate? Yes. Yeah, great. Councillor Richards. Uh, thanks. I'm going to take you back to a follow-up from Councillor Vaudrey's, if I may. Um, I'm, I think I'm clear on the infill side of things. What I'm not clear on is what, is, what exactly is in the neighbourhood development plan. It sounds to me from the agent that it, this has been identified as an area that can be built on uh, by virtue of the fact that it's within a built-up area boundary. Is that right? And if it is, is that not in itself special circumstances that would outweigh any harm? Okay, so the, the, the policy H1 of the neighbourhood plan uh, says the built-up area boundary of Wootamoran is defined by the village boundary. On the, uh, I'll just get back to that. Um, a new housing within the village boundary will be supported in principle. However, there's supporting text. I'm going to here. Yep. Any new development will therefore be restricted to limited infill within the village boundary in accordance with paragraph 89 of the National Planning Framework. That's obviously now been updated, but by a very similar paragraph. And this will have the effect of focusing any new development towards the most sustainable locations within the neighbourhood area. So it still talks about limited infill, and it's still for us to make an assessment as to whether we consider this is limited infill in Greenbelt terms. Okay, Councillor Organ. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, can I just clarify, you said stable location, was it? And if so, can you define the word for me? Was it sustainable or? Oh, sustainable or stable, sorry. Um, I, I didn't hear your word properly for the location. Oh, uh, so so the, the application site is currently occupied by stables. Oh, stable. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, so uh, Councillor Barnes. I'm just checking. The applicant said it was in a sustainable location, 300 metres from anywhere in the train, and that you would agree with that. Have you been out on site? Uh, yeah, yes, well, I think we would consider it to be sustainable. Okay, let's move to this debate. Anyone have anything? Uh, Councillor Organ, thank you. Thank you. Um, well, as far as I can see, it's inside the built up boundary of the village, it's a local service village. And it's in accordance with the NDP. It's a sustainable location. So I see no reason why this shouldn't go ahead. I'll just come in there. I, I agree with nearly everything you said. However, uh, I don't believe it's in, it's in accordance with our, our Greenbelt policy or, or even the, the local service, the, 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 wooden, um, the wooden policy, which quotes national policy about limited infill. So it's all down to the question of is this limited infill? Do we consider this to be limited infill either? So, Councillor Richards. Thank you. Um, I, I think I'd be inclined to agree with you, uh, Councillor Kerridge. The, um, uh, what I was, I was trying to manage in my head was that the infill side of things, and if indeed it is infill, I don't think um, just because it's within a built-up area boundary that actually, uh, when we look at it on the map, is very separated from the main uh, conurbation of Wooten Warren. Um, I don't think that constitutes limited infill. Therefore, we have to fall to special circumstances. Now, I was, based on the, uh, what I heard from our speakers, I was starting to err on the side that actually, you know, the fact that this is in a neighbourhood development plan suggests that it is um, special circumstances. But having had clarification now, it's not as black and white as I first thought and as, as we were led to believe by our, um, by our speakers. It very clearly within the NDP um, does rely on the uh, paragraphs about Greenbelt and CS10 of our own core strategy, and I don't think this satisfies those paragraphs. So I will be going with the officer's recommendation, and I propose we do refuse on that basis. That's a proposal we've actually had there. Um, I'm going to go to Councillor Barnes first, and then. Well, as far as I'm concerned, the design is okay. It's in a village, it's a sustainable location. Uh, you could have a job in Birmingham and get there in about 20 seconds if you run quest on your bike to the station. Um, and that's why some time ago we had a, a great big house in the Greenbelt and we went and looked at it and had a site visit and we did feel unanimously that uh, the officer, uh, in that case, it was for refusal and we approved it. 
And uh, I'm, I'm of the same opinion. That's why I suggested that, as far as I'm concerned, I would like to approve the application um, and, and are quite happy to propose that. But well, we, uh, we I have a proposal feel, against uh, at the I moment. Do, do, you, do you feel that um, your comments to the last uh, speaker were, 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 were not actually correct in the green belt. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, I would prefer a site visit, but uh, I would be happy to propose it. Councillor Organ. Yes, if I can quote from page 32 of the report, the limited in filling or partial of complete redevelopment of a previously developed brownfield site, which is this is, subject to it not having a materially greater impact on the openness of the green belt. So it is a matter of opinion as to whether what is proposed will have a greater impact on the green belt than what is already there. Thank you. Okay, well, we haven't got a second yet. Um, no, I, I, I completely agree. Oh, yeah, sorry, Councillor Vaughan. I was feeling that you're leaving me out. Sure. Um, I just wanted to get in first. Actually, this is one where, where because I haven't seen the site, uh, I think it's, and it's in green belt, but the neighbourhood plan ambiguity I actually err towards, so my position is either I side with the officer or if there is you know, unanimous support for what Peter has proposed, I actually think in this instance, probably one, if one sees it, one can be unambiguous about whether it is infill or not infill. I think it's quite difficult to sort of, without seeing it, really know that. So I'll, I, would, I would default to probably seconding Councillor Richard's motion unless there is a view that people are keen to actually go and see it, in which case, if, it, if it's obvious, then I'm open to a different view. Uh, I'm just going to quick come back on Councillor Organ. You're quite, I think you're quite right that it is a matter of opinion, and, and again, it rests on if, if this has a greater impact, a materially greater impact on, on the openness of the green belt. Um, you know, you, can, you could say that because you're not going to see it very much from the road, that because it's kind of set against existing houses when, you, when it's viewed from the fields, that you're going to add extra landscaping, which is going to improve things because of the high quality of design. All of these things lead to it not having a greater impact on, on the openness of the green belt, if that was the way you were thinking. But to, to cut things short, we've had a, a proposal to follow the recommendation and refuse. I'm going to second that, um, that, that proposal. No, it was a, it was a uh, yeah. <laughs> but I would say that there, there, are, there are at least two people here who want a site visit, but we have to go through the, the, the first things first. If you, don't, if, if you want a site visit, you might want to vote us down um, and then vote for a site visit. I don't. Um, I'm happy to go with the proposal. So the proposal before us is to refuse planning application. Uh, all those in favour of refusing? Two chairman. All those against refusing? Three. Three. Abstentions? One. One. Okay, so that's four of them. Uh, so have we got another proposal? Well, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I'm quite happy with what's in front of us. Um, if you want a proposal, I'm quite happy to propose that we approve it then. Okay, that's one thing. What would you, Councillor? I'm quite happy to second that. We've got a, a proposer and a seconder. Uh, we're going to have a few comments in between. Yeah, um, so all we've heard is, yeah, I'm quite happy with it. Um, I don't know why. Uh, my colleagues are prepared to go against an officer's recommendation and we need to understand that. I think, so I think, if you, sorry, I think we do, Councillor. I, I think we do. Can you give us a reason, uh, Councillor, on either, I think it's got to be, you know, you think it is limited infilling, uh, you think there's very special circumstances if it's not limited infilling, or you think... Um, it's in a sustainable location. Well, I think we have to address these things of... Um, redevelopment of a, of a previously developed site potentially not having a materially greater impact on the green belt. These are the reasons and we need to say why we're going against officers. It's in a brownfield site 
It's in the middle of a village. It's in the, in the area for building. It has got buildings on there. It is, if you like, in a sustainable location. The officer said she liked the design of both of the houses. They were in keeping with the green belt. So as far as I'm concerned, only the green belt is, the, is our problem. It's our interpretation of where they are in the green belt. And as far as I can see, if you can see, they're, they're in between all the other houses. They're in the location. They're in the village. OK, they're so you're saying it is infill? Who proposed this? Sorry. Uh, OK. Councillor Barnes proposed it on the fact that it is infill. OK. Are you happy to second it under those circumstances? Right. So, all those... We need, we need some uh, clarification on the conditions, Chair. Oh, conditions, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so if you um, are minded to approve, I would recommend the following conditions. Um, standard three-year condition um, and um, a condition limiting it to the approved plans. Um, a condition um, requiring no demolition to occur during the nesting season. Um, a finished floor levels condition. Uh, details of services and utilities locations. Um, and then external materials, uh, a planting scheme, hard surfacing details, full drainage scheme details, um, provision for electric vehicle charging, uh, the wheelie bin condition and the water butt condition, and uh, the removal of permitted development, uh, household of permitted development. Is there a condition on the, the drive? That would be the hard service in details. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Councillor Organ. Um, thank you. Can we have a condition also on the hours that construction vehicles can go in and out and not to obstruct the driveway as there are other vehicles there? I think uh, um, a scheme of this size, we wouldn't normally put a construction management condition on. We could add one. I, I would argue it might be onerous um, in this instance. Onerous. Just because of the scale of, of, of the development and the fact that they are normally limited just by the, the mechanisms of what you'd have to adhere to. However, by all, by all means, it is, it is a condition we can add. You want, you want to add that? Yeah. Okay. Excuse me, Chair. There was a second string to Councillor Organ's suggestion. That was that uh, construction traffic shouldn't be allowed to park on the driveway. And Councillor Organ, I'm sorry, we can't do that. But we could do the other one. Yep. Yeah. All parking is on site because that's a rather dangerous road. So if people sign to park on the road, particularly near the um, station end of it, we've got to make sure that doesn't happen. Okay, that's noted. Right. Okay, so we have all that sorted. But we've just got to confirm that Council Barnes is happy with all those. Additions. Are you happy with all those additional um, conditions? Yes. 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 The management and the council organ. Lovely. So all those are in favour of granting permission. Uh, for this application, vote now. Three chairman. Okay. Against. Two chairman. Abstain. One. One. Chairman. Lovely. Well, this committee has uh, resolved to grant uh, planning application uh, eighteen zero zero one seven five Mill House. Uh, right, so we're going to go on to application 1801458 now, garage blocks in Knights Lane. Uh, Alison Young isn't here, so are you ready, Victoria, in, in a few moments? <laughs> I'll let you finish off the last one. We'll uh, take us through that. Thank you, Chair. Um, there are updates to this planning application, um, but the re uh, recommendation remains as per the report, which I will get to at the end of the presentation. Um, so, um, the position of the site is denoted by the black dot on this slide. Um, the site is located in Tiddington within the defined built up area um, of Stratford. Um, the application site is edged in red. On this slide, um, the site currently contains garaging, which is no longer in use. 
The site is accessed from Knights Lane, um, and there is a pedestrian route through the site which runs from Knights Lane to Lawson Avenue. Um, the proposal is for an additional dwelling, which is here, uh, which would be attached to the side of the development uh, that was previously approved for four dwellings approved under application reference 1703137FUL. Uh, so the red, the red hatched area shows the previously approved scheme. This application seeks to amend the previously approved parking layout uh, for that scheme. Um, and the previous approval is shown at the top and the now proposed parking layout is shown at the bottom. So we have the changing uh, location of the turning head, additional parking space, here and an alteration to how the parking layout works over in this corner. This shows the floor plans and proposed elevations of the site. You'll note that the elevation includes um, a, a larger first floor than ground floor. That's to enable access through this portal here, um, which is where the pedestrian access is through the site. So it goes through there, right, it's that one, yes, yeah, so it goes through the site here. Uh, this is the proposed street scene elevations. So these houses here have already got consent and the proposal is simply for this dwelling here in terms of elevations. This is photos of the site and the existing pedestrian route through the site. So from Knights Lane, it's through the garage site, and then from Lawson Avenue, it's a pedestrian access that leads itself into the garage, garage site here. This is a photo of the existing garages. And again, the access into the site. Uh, the recommendation is for approval. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and we are going to hear from uh, objectors. Uh, a resident, Mr. Alan Nash. Welcome. And you have... Chair, we have a presentation for Mr. Nash. Great, so you do have a presentation. Um, yes. Just <coughs> tell the officers when you want them moved on, I guess, yep. Lovely. So you'll have three minutes, and I'll give you half a minute warning at the end. And okay, this is a backland site surrounding on all sides and immediately adjacent to other houses, bungalows, and, and gardens. The site contains trees, hedges, and a green area which supports wildlife. Our property at 70 Nights Lane shares its border for the entire length of the 70, uh, 55 metres to the northwest. We are not against the development of the site and we were generally accepted the previous approval for four houses. Despite what the application information suggests, the extra unit will necessitate removal of a large green area of land with established trees and hedgerows, approximately four metres by 35 metres, which provides a wildlife corridor linking gardens adjacent to the site, a point which was echoed in the commute document by the CPRE. The application goes against core strategy policies concerned with natural environment and design and distinctiveness. CS6 proposals will be expected to minimize impacts on biodiversity and where possible secure net gain in biodiversity, while safeguarding and where possible in enhancing existing habitats. We are concerned that the county ecologist has provided his no objection comments on the incorrect basis that the trees will not be removed, but they will. The application has failed to include a tree survey or bat wildlife survey, but as this site along with adjoining trees and hedges supports bats, the council should not be considering the planning application without one. CS9 seeks to ensure high quality design, including making best use of the on-site assets, including landscape features, avoiding developments with little or no public di diversity, biodiversity value, and appropriate design having regard to height, width, and depth of building. The extra house now proposed is just trying to squeeze too much onto this site and would result in an excessive Balkan appearance, creating a monolithic brick block that splits and spoils the development. 
the, application, the applicants incorrectly suggest that the proposed terrace replicates, replicates an existing terrace on Knights Lane, which we certainly do not agree with. The Council's own figures and recent articles in the press state that the SDC has and is forecast to exceed its housing requirement. It quotes, and this strengthens our hand in resisting speculative development on sites which are not most suitable or preferred. We believe this is such a case, the, the site is not reasonably suitable or capable of accommodating the extra house, is contrary to seconds. core strategy policies, CS6 and CS9, and on this basis we ask for refusal of this application. Uh, lovely, thank you. Uh, any questions? Councillor Organ. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, if I may, can I ask how many trees are actually proposed to be removed? And the trees are, as you see in that photograph, where there's an area that was, it, the measures the, um, about four metres by 35 metres. That just shows one area of it. And that sort of links the sort of back, the rear gardens, Whitfield Close and Knights Lane. And that links the gardens with those gardens on Lawson Avenue. But it's a tree survey. Sorry, a tree survey, a survey has not been done for this, this site, or wildlife survey. Okay, Councillor Barnes. Oh, are you saying that the green, in the previous application, all this green is stopping, but this application, it's got to go. Yeah, that's the case, yeah. It is addressed on, on the previous application. There was an area which has been landscapes and, and trees, plantation trees, which would have minimised the impact of this total removal. And this, and also the house borders, completely borders up to the fence. Okay, any other questions? No, thank you very much. Uh, and we are going to now hear from the agent, uh, Steve Bromley. Welcome, and you, as you know, have three minutes, and I'll give you the 30-second 30 30 warning. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, the application uh, is before you at the request of the ward member who has concerns about the proposed parking and turning arrangement. I think I'm right in saying that the ward member accepts the principles of the development, that it complies with the housing policies of the core strategy and the draft neighbourhood development plan. The Highway Authority has also initially expressed concerns about the parking layout and turning area. The applicant discussed these concerns with the Highway Authority who recommended modifications to the parking arrangements. And this was for plots one and two. And they recommend, the Highway Authority recommended minor changes to the parking layout and the turning area. Accepting this advice, an amended site plan, plan has been submitted. The plan you have seen today. Now, the parking spaces have been repositioned. The parking spaces for plots two have been moved from alongside plot one and will now be in front of plot two, which is clearly a more practical and convenient parking arrangement. The turning space has been redesigned, making it larger. The applicant has also submitted a vehicle tracking plan that demonstrates delivery vans will be able to turn within the, high, within the site. The higher authority have accepted this plan. I understand the case officer carried out further round of consultations and notifications with the amended site plan and the Highway Authority have now confirmed in writing that they have no objection. The case officer gives full support to the application as amended and finally comment has been made about limited space for parking. However, the 12 spaces proposed uh, for five dwellings is a standard of provision that exceeds the parking requirement that would have been required under the Council's previous residential parking standards. They also exceed the minimum parking standard in the Council's draft uh, 
Development Requirements Supplementary Planning Document. Chairman, the application will provide a well-designed, modest two-bedroom dwelling that fits in well with the approved scheme. We have resolved the parking layout and turning space to the satisfaction of the case officer and the highway authority. I hope that members are now able to support the application. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, any questions? Councillor Vaudry. Um, the neighbour mentioned trees, so can you just comment on confirming that the new application versus the old one, there is that, we obviously saw the photo, that row of trees going. And then secondly, and, and if you know the number of trees going and why, why you think that's acceptable. And secondly, there was a question about no bat survey. I am surprised, the other surveys I know aren't compulsory, but I'm surprised there is no bat survey. Can you just explain why? Yes, I've never uh, carried out, or we've never carried out a, a tree survey. It looks like a very scrubby edge of development site. Uh, there are no trees of any stature on this piece of land. All I saw when I was on the site are, are elderberry trees. So I think these trees are of no importance. Uh, on the issue, uh, I would say, incidentally, that um, as a result of the development, there'll be a significant increase in green space on the site because these dwellings will have quite long gardens. There'll be green spaces, people will plant bushes and trees. So I, I consider there'll be a net ecological benefit in the long run in, in developing this site. Mostly the site at the moment is mostly hard standing and garages. So there's, a, there's an increase in open space and greenery. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, on, on, I haven't asked, answered the question about the bats. I mean, I, I actually spoke to the county ecologist a long time ago about the potential for bats on this site. They've looked at, this, at both applications. The, they don't consider there's any likelihood of bats on the site. Okay, thank you. Councillor Fielding. On the top of the two plans, it shows, I presume, trees that are going to be planted along the edge of the development on the, on the right-hand side there. You're going to do away with the trees when you build the new extension or terraced house. But is there going to be garden, the other side of the house, that's going to go right the way down, or are you going to fence along the side of the road? What's going to happen on that side? Hmm. I think we've got to get, take a step back with it. I don't really think there are trees, as you imagine trees, on that strip of long land down the side of the site. As I say, I, I think there's some elderberry bushes that have grown quite tall. I don't remember seeing any large stature trees that you consider to be significant. Um, I mean, I think that, that site plan illustrates quite clearly the, the, the architect hasn't actually coloured green the open space, which is all the back gardens. So, as I've said previously, there will be a significant net increase in green space on this site. I think we can see the garden there to the, to the right. No, normally. Uh, any other questions? No? Uh, thank you very much. And we'll go now, I think, to the ward member, Councillor Rolf. Who has five minutes. Five minutes if you wanted. You don't have to use five minutes. Uh, if I might start by saying that this development has permission for four properties with enough space around the development to keep the biodiversity and spaced parking and which all the neighbours and myself were happy with. But now an extra squashed in property has come along to compromise this and as you can see from the amount of objectors has upset everyone due to its overdevelopment. This new unit squashes right up to the boundary where the vegetation along there will have to be removed in order to build. This vegetation has an enormous amount of biodiversity within it, and there are bats, believe me, the neighbours have seen them, along this wall of vegetation, and no bat survey has been done. This vegetation also creates a natural barrier to the bungalows on Whitfield Close, and two of these bungalows, if this goes ahead, will now look out onto a two-storey brick wall instead of hedging and trees. This boundary would not have had to be removed in the original application of four properties. 
The form says that no trees will be removed, but I suggest that there is no way this fifth unit can be built without removing it as it's butted up so close to the boundary. We have a five-year housing supply. There's no imperative for this extra squeezed-in unit to be approved. The extra unit now creates bulk and mass and congestion and is out of character with the surrounding area. Nowhere in Tiddington or Knights Lane has a unit been created with an undercroft stroke archway. The turning space. In the original approved plan, there was plenty of space for vehicles to turn. Not now. Now it's left to what appears to be a parking space, which of course people will park in and then there'll be no room to turn. Larger vehicles will have a huge problem. Visitor parking. The developer has tried to address the concerns of highways and myself about visitor parking. So I stuck one at the side, which looks odd and out of character. And if you look at the plan behind it, is a column which you'll have to back into. It's interesting that. This is because I objected to tandem parking on site and there's still tandem parking. You need to be aware that all parking for this development will be on site as there is no parking on the streets around as they have yellow lines all around. People will park in the turning bay which looks like a parking space. This site is going to look so congested and squashed. Finally, the resident who lives at number 15 Lawson Avenue has a legal right to drive his vehicles through the site and into his back garden. This is not a private arrangement, but a legal one, and he drives a van of seven and a half tonnes, which will now have to drive under the arch. This arch restricts the size of his van if ever he wants to buy a new one. Highway seem to have taken no notice of the fact that there will be a regular vehicle movements under this arch which will compromise with pedestrians and over owners of the new properties. This is not, as stated by the planner, just for pedestrian access. It's for vehicle access too. I'm sorry I didn't ask for a site visit. I was away at the time um, and it completely escaped my mind. However, I do believe that before you make any judgment on this development, you should be satisfied that there's a BAT survey done, which there isn't, and that you should be satisfied that all screening will stay, which at the moment indicates that it won't, and you will be satisfied that it will not look out of character. The four units were fine. The fifth has destroyed the entire character and appearance. CPRE have also objected. We must take note of the fact that they also object to the strip of greenery being taken down. They feel just as strongly as we all do, and they usually only comment when it's important to them. I suggest to you that you have many reasons to refuse this application. Overdevelopment, no bat survey, crampness of sight and parking an issue, out of character, loss of trees and biodiversity, loss of privacy to the bungalows on Whitfield Close, and the five-year land supply. I would urge you to refuse this application. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions? Councillor Richards. Uh, thank you, Councillor Rolfe. I've been trying to work out in my mind how that whole one-way system would work, and I assumed that there would be a... I wasn't 100% sure on the pedestrianisation of that little route through. Can cars drive through there now? Um, and no, they cars, can't. Cars can only... The owner of number 15... The owner of number 15, Lawson Avenue parks his vehicles in his back garden and he has the right to, to drive his vehicles and the vehicles of the three flats that he owns into his back garden okay, I think under you've, that undercroft. You've, you've jumped the gun a little bit, Sorry. but that's helpful. Yeah. Um, so on this uh, picture here, that blue line is, the f is what's the footpath now. Yep. You're, you kind of, you, you can't get out onto Lawson Avenue. Okay, you, you sort of seem to insinuate that uh, if this development were permitted, then it would, you would be able to drive through that way. Uh, you, yes. You're telling me you can't. We, I'm, I'm we, utterly confused. Now. Yes, you can, but you, but he is restricted to the height and size of his van. Yeah, I think through. you're focusing too much on the one individual. Right. Okay. Can cars get up that blue where that blue yep. rectangle? Can, can they yep. get up there and through to the other side? No. Thank you. Good. Okay. Did you have a question, Councillor Fielding? Any other questions, Councillor Organ? Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, could you just identify the property that has the right to drive through there? The property... Oh, well, I'll have to show you. I think we'll, can we, do, we can do <laughs> this in technical can questions. Can oh. oh, we're going to do it now. <laughs> Councillor Rolf, we'll... That drops that there. Is that the where the pointer is there. Yeah. Thank you. Is that it? Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Okay, thank you, Councillor Rolf. Thank, thank you. you.
technical questions. Anyone got any? Councillor Baldry. So my two points. So why, why is this before us without a BAT survey? I, I may be wrong, but I always thought a BAT survey would have been standard. And secondly, can you summarise what is going on on that strip of green? And is it elderberry trees or whatever we were told, or kind of what is in there? And um, should it have been analysed for biodiversity or not? I think the simple answer I can give to that is that we consulted the county ecologist. They um, have come back um, giving no re uh, representations. They have subsequently been consulted again, I believe in the update sheet, they've once again said that they don't wish to make any representations. And normally, they would be the ones that are recommending bat surveys, tree surveys, um, anything along those lines based on their expertise. So we've relied upon their expertise Make, in, in getting to where we've got to. So that's the BAT survey. Just, you know, we, we don't recommend BAT service. County does. Was there another question? Well, oh. well. Councillor Fielding. In the update sheet, it refers to lighting scheme for the drive-through to be submitted and implemented. Does that drive through and, and basically go right the way down or because if it's pedestrian? Yeah, it, it, it is a little confusing. Um, it took me a while to, to understand this. So this is a pedestrian access. Um, there's bollards at this end and there's just a it's green either side and there's a pedestrian access through the middle here. You can obviously drive a car from um, Knight's Lane into the existing garage site it being a garage site and you could drive your car all the way down here and then you can access the rear of these properties and you can go no further than the rear of those properties so this property here has the right to access that I didn't I didn't I, yeah sorry yeah so so there is there is an, a, a right of access for the resident to come through here through the site here to access the rear properties. So the pedestrian access is through here. There is vehicular access through the site that is legal uh, to, to the rear of these properties at this point. Uh, Councillor Wolf, would you like very briefly to say anything? Or are you happy with that? Uh, I'm sort of, yes, I am. Come, come, come to the mic, please. not rear of properties it's one property that has a long enough back garden that vehicles park in mm -hmm. and that's the access that he has a legal right to have including a van okay thank you that's that's thank good you. that was clarification that's all I wanted can thank you turn the turn the turn the thing off yeah. councillor Rolf oh, that doesn't matter oh. yeah. can I'm going to clarify something for us all so I don't want yeah. to be the bearer of bad news, but basically um, rights of access or easements to give them their formal name are actually property rights and not planning rights. Therefore, if there's an issue uh, regarding a right of way with uh, the person who um, believes he has a right and the owner of this site, then that is a matter between the two parties. It's not for this planning committee to consider. Thank you very much for clarifying that. I'm not sure where we were. I'm going to go Councillor Barnes. All I was going to ask is, are the exits and entrance and that's exactly the same as they were when it was garages. Yes. It was, we're taking down old garages, aren't we? We're taking down old garages and the entrance into what is currently the garage site will be the entrance into what will be the housing site. Councillor Fielding. I probably didn't fully understand what um, the solicitor was saying, but is that blue route through is that currently it's not currently highways is it because there's a bollard at the end so it's blocked off so therefore have we got to give it um, change of use yeah I, I think I think I can answer that question councillor um, that blue route is currently a public right per, currently a pedestrian link so it's a footpath. it is a footpath yes you notice I nearly said public right away. I don't know that it is, so please don't assume that. It is a footpath link. 
So theoretically, you could walk, I'm sure in principle practice, you can walk from Lawson Avenue through to, um, I've forgotten the name of the road. Night Lane. Through, Night through to Knights Lane. Okay. All the way through. Now, I have a question on, it was raised that the, there are no, I think, is it Undercroft, the, this hole through a building, that there's none really in the area and it's kind of out of character. You got any comments on that? Yes, uh, Chairman. Whether or not there are any in the area, the character of this terrace of houses is not enormously dissimilar to the character of other terraces of houses in the area, in officers' opinion. Okay, thank you very much. Councillor Richards. While we're on character, could you, I think it would flip down one slide. So on the right-hand side, which is, the, I believe, to be the proposed, we've got white buildings, and then on the left above, it's all red. Am I, am I misunderstanding this? Are we changing the... No, so yeah, so uh, the, the, the bottom image, so all of these already have approval. So there's already approval for two rendered properties and two brick properties. So we're just extending the red So brick. we're just extending okay, it with this good, one unit thanks. here, yeah. Okay, no more questions to debate. Anybody, uh, Councillor Fielding? In my opinion, the fact that there is no right, well, there is a pedestrian right of way down that road. We... I don't think we can grant, or unless I'm le wrong legally, a vehicular right of way which will have to be granted for people to go down there. I also don't like the idea of having a, an archway there, which, knowing what young people can get up to, it could be a source of problems in the future. But I don't suspect that's a planning matter, but um, it is something I would... Okay, we're going like. to have one comment from our solicitor. Uh, as to confirm what Dale said, uh, there probably is a, um, uh, a right of way on foot, and uh, I should imagine by prescription rules that has been acquired over 20 years anyway, there may be a vehicular access right as well. But like I said, those are property matters, they're not planning matters. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Richards. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm just going to very quickly address the, uh, the archway point. I don't know what you did when you were younger in archways, but things definitely have changed. Um, I actually drive through an archway to get to my property, and there's no issues at all. Um, that said, uh, having looked at the, particularly the top-down view and tried to understand the site and where it is, where it's located, I, actually, I do feel this is a, an overdevelopment of the site. Um, it feels to me like we're packing in an additional house just to squeeze one in for the sake of squeezing an extra one in. Um, it does seem out of character and out of keeping with the locality. Um, and on that basis, I would be inclined to propose a um, refusal of the application. But I'd like to hear what everyone else says before we get to that stage. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say something. I'm, at the moment, tending towards your point of view. Um, I heard what Councillor Rolf said about the undercroft and what our officers have said about that. Um, <laughs> Maybe not that specifically, but it, I think that's this area, if you go and look at the houses, they're very open around here. They're very spaced out houses all around the, the surrounds. Uh, and this is, I think, much more dense. And it's only a small development, but it's right in the middle of, of a lot of other houses which are all nicely spaced out. So I think this is just that one house too much for, for the character of the area. So, so I do agree with you. Um, uh, I've second that, actually, but we'll um, hear from other people as well. I, ha I hadn't actually proposed, but I'm quite happy to um, uh, to propose that on the basis that we've given. Also, I'd, I'd just add to the reasons for refusal in that um, we, we, we as a committee provided it, we vote to push this through, that we identify harm by virtue of the overdevelopment and the benefit of a single dwelling does not outweigh that harm. Uh, Councillor Fielding. Okay. Councillor Barnes. Yes, I have concern on this. But, I mean, I appreciate that the county council are happy with the, the layout after a number of goes, and if they're sort of happy. I'm not over keen on the county council in that respect. So, um, well, because uh, they use a minimum standard, uh, and uh, all cars are getting a lot bigger these days. 
Lovely. Any others? Um, we're going to need a policy reason. I think the description we've given uh, definitely fits into a policy, uh, if not several policies. Uh, we're talking about overdevelopment. We're talking about, uh, well, we, we've said it all recently. I think there was a, a very lucid uh, description of why we choose to, to, to turn this down or at least propose it. Uh, is it CS9? Can you tell me? Would those reasons fit into CS9? I think it would, yeah, yes. Great. So we have a it's policy. It's an AS10 as well. <coughs> oh, so we've got to leave CS9. Uh, it, it may fit into several things, design and character. No, CS10. Uh, CS9, yeah. Yeah. I think we've had a very lucid set of reasons yeah. given. Uh, yeah. Good. I'm sure we can sort out the actual policies that these reasons will fit into. So uh, we have a proposal and a seconder. Can we just confirm, Chip, before we actually go through the bank? Confirm. Just confirm the policy. We're confirming that we do need a policy number. Yeah. yeah, we're just making sure. Otherwise, we're going to backtrack, and that would be embarrassing. Chair, I apologize for the hiatus. Uh, I think you've hit the nail on the head with CS9, and the uh, issues that I heard raised were overdevelopment, out of character, and out of keeping with the area. And that's, that's what I'm running with. Yes, yes. Excellent. Yes, so we have a policy reason to hang this on. Um, we are proposing to uh, refuse this application. All those in favour of refusing? Unanimous chairman. Okay, this uh, committee has resolved to refuse. Uh, planning application 18.01458, full uh, Ninth Lane, Tiddington. We can have five minutes. We're going to have a five-minute break, okay?
Great. Uh, so uh, the next application is 1801472. What page is that? Page 55. I am going to be stepping down for this, so uh, I would be looking for a nomination for a chair for this item. Can I have some nominations? Councillor yes, Richards. Um, given we have someone at the table who was a vice chair and has chaired this planning committee very well before, I don't see why we shouldn't propose Councillor Vaudry. So we have a proposal for Councillor Vaudry. He did an extremely good job when he did it before. As you can see, it's come as a complete surprise to him. <laughs> uh, okay, that's great. Are there, are there any other nominations? Well, I didn't ask him. Any other nominations? No. no. Pardon? No, that's good. Okay, so all, all in favour of that? That's agreed. Thank you very much. So um, we are going to look at application 18 stroke 01472 stroke FUL, Spernal Park, uh, Burford Lane, construction of car park and access modifications. So if I could invite the case officer to present the, uh, the details, please. Thank you, Chairman. Planning consent is sought for the construction of a car park and a modified access to the site to provide a convenient parking area for visitors to Spurnall Park and Mosgrove Copse. The location of the site is indicated by the black dot. The site is more clearly defined here by the red line boundary uh, and access to the site is shown from Burford Lane. This is an aerial photo of the site with the approximate boundary of the site shown in red. The site is located in the open countryside within the Greenbelt and the special landscape area of Arden and the Vale of Evesham control zone. These are existing site photos, top being the ac existing access to the site and the bottom the existing field. This is the proposed site layout, which is for the proposal to um, lay out a car park of 30 parking bays and four minibus bays. This is the access to the site and how that would be improved. So the very bottom of the access would be improved by um, implementing tarmac. Uh, the access to the site itself would be restricted by a height restrictive barrier in this location and um, a proposed parking meter. This is an indication of what the barrier would appear like and the um, parking meter. The barrier itself would have not only the height restriction but a gate uh, that would go across it uh, when the car park is not in use. This is the access to the site, um, photos taken from the driver's seat to show uh, visibility in both directions and the photo at the bottom uh, I can probably show you more clearly from a video that I have, um, is um, a neighbouring field access. Could you help me find the video? Can you just bear with me a moment for the video? It's in, it's in here, isn't it? Yeah, there it's we go. Here. Will you be quicker? If you are, if you find it properly. So this is standing in the road looking towards the site, looking towards the access. Uh, that's the existing access to the site. That gate to the left is the, the neighbouring gate access and then looking back towards the road. The recommendation is for approval, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I've just looked at the list of who's down to speak. I've got no one planning to speak for this application. Can I just confirm there's no one here planning to speak for it? Nope. In that case, on my list, Councillor Paul Harvey from Spurnell Parish. If you'd like to come up, you have three minutes, Mr. Harvey, Councillor Harvey. Um, when you start, we'll start the clock. Uh, 
Thank you, Chairman. Uh, this is a very rare appearance by Morton Baggett, Spurn and Oldbrook Parish Council. We're normally content to let officers have their say. But to put that into context, although this is an isolated um, location, there are nine residences within a few hundred metres, and the majority of those have objected to the application for a variety of reasons. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to speak purely on one of them, which is the most consistent uh, objection and concern. Um, unfortunately, our area recently has become prone to crime, and one of the residences in particular has burgled three times in quick succession um, by a particularly, un a particularly nasty gang of people who'd obviously spent some time surveilling the property from adjacent farmland or footpath. So fear of crime is a very significant um, concern in, in our area. Um, the police, in fact, originally objected to this application on that basis, the Crime Reduction and Community Safety Officer, on the basis they were concerned, and they still are concerned, even though they've withdrawn their application. They say they're still concerned about offenders leaving cars in the car park without suspicion while they carry out their crime. So in a nutshell, those are the concerns of the Parish and the residents of Spurnell. Um, and if you were minded to approve, we're particularly concerned about opening hours and the gate being locked at night, um, and that the uh, applicant should follow the high quality of construction that's proposed with grass and grass reinforced um, <coughs> paving, which has not always been used in their other car parks. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Harvey. Any questions from members? Nope, thank you very much. So next on my list here um, is Mr. Stephen Lake, uh, wishes to object to the application. So Mr. Lake, if you'd like to come forward. Have a seat. It's the same time length again, three minutes, Mr. Lake. Whenever you start, we'll start the clock rolling. Hello. Uh, my name's Steve Lake. I'm the person that's immediately, my, mine's the farm gate that accesses the same driveway that this uh, uh, application is all about. Uh, I exit onto that same driveway, and it's that that brings the main concern, that my entrance and exit is hidden from the highway view when approaching from Spurnell Lane. It's, the video itself doesn't show the drive from Spurnell Lane to my property, and you certainly can't see the gate in the drive from Spurnell Lane you are within a matter of metres before that's visible. Uh, with 30, potentially 30 cars, I'm sure they're providing car parking spaces for people who may arrive, and it's fair to say they won't all arrive in one go, but the increase in traffic on that gate is going to cause a congestion, if only because my entrance and exit is hidden. My gate opens outwards into that space, and it will impede the entrance itself. In the applicant's um, submission, they almost, by suggestion, uh, say that they own the entrance. They don't. That entrance belongs to the local highways. It's not under their registered title, neither it is under mine. Um, display lines look fine on that video, and I agree, they don't look unreasonable. However, during the growing season, the hedges do not get maintained as well as perhaps they might, and I'm sure that's financial restrictions on the highway side. And the the banks left and right of the road are raised in excess of a metre high. Add to that 600 millimetres of grass cover, and when you're sat in the driving position trying to exit that side, you don't get the clear view that is suggested there. Um, so my objections are mainly on the grounds of highway safety. The route is used extensively by cyclists, um, and it's only a matter of 10 days ago that we had a cyclist knocked off, broke the hip, in the, very close to that location. So it's, it's a, there are no footpaths. The, uh, the public footpath, the public right of way that, uh, that currently exists, actually exits just 100 metres up the road onto Burford Lane. So any current users of that site actually walk down Burford Lane. So there is a substantial amount of, of organised walks that are using that site at the moment. The proposal isn't for those seconds. people to, to enjoy the walks in a, any, any more than they c currently already do. It's to bring other people in, other cars into the location. And most of those people are, are dog walkers. 
We've got a dog, love dogs, no problems. And I have to say, I've got no problems with the heart of England generally. I think they do an excellent job. This particular location in a single track lane is, is one of highway safety. In, in a mile of Spurnal Lane, they have other sites that would... That Mr. Could Lager, access all of I've, got a fed, I've got to stop you there. Your three minutes is up. But okay. I, think, I think we get your you point. You get the idea. So it's now questions from... I invite councillors to ask you questions. So, Councillor Fielding, first of all. Where do... People evidently use the footpath, you're saying, and they come in with groups. Where do they park their vehicles at the present moment? Okay, well, I'd say the pleasure of that is that they, generally speaking, walk further. Um, so they park in their cars much further away. In truth, we don't see any. Uh, so they are organised groups, potentially parking in the local pub, which is the Mother Huff Camp, which is about a mile down the road. But uh, we don't see them parked. There is, of course, the new car park recently granted permission at Hayden Way, which is a mile just further down the road from Spurnal Lane. That's also part of Heart of England Forest. Uh, no problem with that at all, because the display lines are perfectly good and there's easy access. I would also say that just a, a, if you were to come uh, just further down the road, the Heart of England currently have planning consent um, for a, uh, a cemetery, a, a green burial site. Mr. Lake, I'll stop you there if I may. I think we've sort of answered that key point, okay. Councillor, if you're happy with that. We'll move on. Councillor Barnes is next. How often do you use your entrance then every day? Uh, very regularly. Uh, yeah. It's like most people would. Um, not a farm? It's not a farm, it's, a, it's gardens and it's our second entrance. So, yeah. depending okay. on which direction we head. Any more questions from councillors? May I ask just one, just to clarify the point. You said that most people are, who use it now are walking. So, does anyone, do you, do you ever see, do you regularly see cars parked on the road that might, for road safety might be, uh, it might be safe, safer on road safety if they were off, off the road in a car park such as this? Okay, it's, it's not a literal answer to your question, but the only cars we ever see parked outside our gate of an evening are, of course, in couples, and we often have to beep to get access to our own gate. <laughs> Young people, eh, Councillor Fielding? You never know what's going on. <laughs> you should put an arch there. <laughs> yeah, but, okay, Mr Lake, thank you very much for you uh, your presentation. Okay. So now uh, I'd like to invite the ward member, so Councillor Kerridge, um, you have five minutes. Uh, no, I'm not supporting it. I haven't. Uh, I don't think I've supported it. Um, I don't think I supported it. Uh, I was <laughs> kind of no comment. I, in general, uh, as with the uh, the other speaker, uh, I'm in favour of uh, increasing access to the countryside. Uh, this is increasing access to the countryside. The Heart of England Forest, great organisation. Really, really happy that they're on our doorstep, uh, on many of our doorsteps. Uh, so, in principle, it's a great idea. There may be issues with this specific site. Um, I, d I don't know. I'm just here really to answer questions if you wanted me to. Uh, any questions to Councillor Kerridge? <laughs> no, thank you no, very much, Councillor Kerridge. So, now we turn the matter to technical questions for the officer. So, any technical questions from members? Councillor Barnes. There seem to be a lot of... There's no highway problem here, is there? I mean, it's on private land, isn't it? So it, it, the County Council haven't made any comment. The County Council haven't raised any objections um, to, to the application. They're happy with the visibility to the site. Councillor Richards. Thank you, Councillor Audrey. Um, could you bring up the slide with the, that shows the grass creek and the layout and how it all sort of looks? So just so I'm clear, the grey that all goes all the way up, that's going to be the hard standing, so the stone and gravel and that sort of stuff, and the right-hand side is the grass creek, is that correct? Yep. Yeah. So this all here is a, a stone. Uh, this is one part of its grass creek. I can't quite see from... Yeah, that's grass creek, and then that's grass reinforced plastic there. Okay. Um, so it's obviously generally permitted within Greenbelt and accepted, which I think this is. A farm field, one can lay a certain level of hard standing in its general use, is that right? How much is that permitted? Just taking advice from my colleagues here. Um, uh, there is um, an amount that you can lay under permitted development. We're not quite clear 
how much that is, but it has to be for agricultural purposes. So this wouldn't fall within that. Okay, no, that's fine. Thank you. Councillor Organ. No? Councillor Fielding, my mistake. Um, with regards to the gate opening and closing, um, I presume there is a warden that supervises it. And the, and the second question is, have the police had any input into the gate and the design of the gateway? So, yes, there is a warden. I believe there are a number of sites in the area, so the warden visits those sites um, and would open and shut the gate in accordance with the hours. The hours, um, uh, there, there's a recommendation for, for the hours of use um, via condition on the application. The police were consulted on the planning application that initially raised some concerns over the isolated location, um, but they removed those objections when the gate and access and height restriction and the, the times were then put in as part of the proposal. So they are happy with, with what is now proposed in terms of the, the gate and the, the height restriction. Thank you, Councillor Fielding. I actually had three points, if I may. Um, has there been any analysis of the demand, whether there is demand for what seems to be a fairly large um, car park? Secondly, I'm just curious, what lies beyond this? It seems to be stretching sort of indefinitely. It, you know, is there beyond the plan a property that in due course, you, you know, this takes it nearer a property for some reason? I was just curious about. And thirdly, because it is in Greenbelt, is, does the special circumstance issue with Greenbelt apply here, and have they demonstrated that there is a special circumstance? I'll get to you in the first two points. Um, which have now forgotten, sorry. Sorry, can you repeat your first point to me? I'm very sorry. I was... Demand analysis. Okay, yeah. De demand analysis. Okay, sorry. Uh, so the applicant has informed us that based on other sites of theirs uh, and the other car parks, that th this is a, a demand that, that, that they need. Uh, that's the amount of analysis. It, it's come from them to meet the need um, uh, for, the, for the local coppice. And their business needs. Uh, yeah, and their business needs. The second question was what lies beyond? Um, I, believe, I believe that there are footpaths in, in the general area in terms of, of what lies beyond, um, which eventually lead to... Yeah, perhaps, a public way, public way, yeah. Yeah. There's, there's no built properties to the north. Yep, so the, there's no built, no built properties to the north, but there are public rights of way in, in the general vicinity that that serves. And in relation to the green belt, if you can just bear with me a moment. Thank you for your patience. Um, yeah, the, in relation to green belt, we, we're looking at this in the same way as we would have uh, uh, a building so it's whether this has a, a general impact on um, openness which the officer in their assessment of the report deemed that it wouldn't therefore you don't need to go on to assess whether there are any very special circumstances okay that's helpful thank you so any further technical questions if not I'd like to open it up for debate Sorry, oh yes plan shows the road. Can you tell me, there's a, a, another car park a mile down the road. Do, does that plan actually, doesn't go that far, does it? Either way. Um, it's, out, it's outside of the demise of this photo. Um, it, it, it's off to, the left. off to the left of the photo. <clears throat> yeah. is, that, is that where the pub is that they were referring to? No, that we don't know. No, it's, it's not. It's off Spurnal Lane. Okay, Let, let's, uh, let's start the debate, if I may. Councillor Richards. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I'm really struggling to find any grounds for us not to accept this. The only thing that concerns me is the size of the thing. Um, it is quite large, and we don't really have anything that suggests that there is a desperate need for that amount of cars. Um, but I, I can see no policy grounds that I can pin my hat on to refuse this. So I would be proposing that we grant in favour in line with the officer's recommendation. Uh, <clears throat> is there either a seconder or any other points other councillors wish to raise? Councillor Barnes. 
as you know, Mr. Chairman, I'm not barred from the, another heart of England or, you know, walking trees and whatever. And sometimes it's absolutely full, the car park, with 30, 40 cars. And sometimes there's nobody there at all. It really depends on the weather. So there is a great demand, or it does appear to be, uh, a demand for the five key more, the ten key more. Um, so uh, there is a need, and there isn't much place round there to park. I can understand why the locals aren't happy with it, but like the first speaker, I can't see, really see a reason for refusal. I'll second it. Okay, so we have a seconder for Councillor Richard's motion. Um, just can I clarify one point? I had a couple of issues about conditions. Do we discuss that now before we go to a vote? So can, can I just raise two things? I, I'm, uh, Councillor Barnes pointed out, I think we're both familiar with where these meters are uh, near where we actually reside. And, and I, would want, I would like to request some condition that said that they were somehow not seen from the highway. They were discreetly hidden because you drive past them, it just looks so out of keeping. So I would ask for a condition on that. Um, and also the um, parish council asked about operating hours and when those goats gates were open and closed. And I, I wondered whether there was some discussion that had been had about what was deemed reasonable for opening hours. The opening hours, um, they propose a, a summer and a winter season. So it's 6.30 a.m. till 9.30 p.m. in the summer and 6.30 till 5.30 p.m. in the winter and they give the months of what, what summer and winter are. Okay, um, so, so that, that's the maximum extent of when they would look to operate. It's likely that they would shut before, um, before those times, but that, that's the absolute maximum based on the, their overall management. But certainly that's what the condition requires. And with regards to um, uh, ensuring some sort of screening to the, the parking meter, I think it's very reasonable to um, add a condition on that basis. Any other conditions that councillors want to raise over and above? Councillor Fielding. I'm not happy, <coughs> happy in the summer for it to be open that late because um, people will, if they haven't got back by 8 o'clock, they're either lost or they're, they're, they're going to spend the night there. So I think it should be more of 8 o'clock than later than that. <coughs> Councillor Barnes. I wonder whether we could put a condition on about uh, litter bins because quite often the place is well, up yeah. by your road, it's atrocious what people leave. So uh, I think uh, if it is going to be not, not a public, well, it is public, but the, most of the people are members, so they don't pay, I think we, we do need some litter bins and, and some care. Uh, uh, actually, I would concur with that. So litter bins, again, discreetly hidden from the highway, so you can't at least see them from the highway. Um, but they should be one. And also probably a dog litter bin as well. Uh, specifically, on the on the opening hours, do members have any comments on on the opening hours? Well, yeah, given this is obviously going to be attached to my uh, proposal, so I just want to say I'm entirely comfortable with the uh, screening of the stand. I think the litter bins are a very valid point. Um, I'm surprised actually that we and I overlooked it. Um, the opening hours is very clear on page 62 uh, of our report. The um, applicants have requested uh, 7 a.m as a start time, both in summer and winter, and 5 p.m. in the winter, 9.30 in the summer. Um, we've given them that additional half hour leeway to allow them to be able to get to unlock and what have you, and give them a bit of leeway on, on policing that. I see absolutely no reason why we should tighten them up or change them. Um, the reality is that in the summer particularly, the sun's out until 9.30, 10 o'clock. Some people don't even start walking until 8 o'clock. So um, I think it would be over-restrictive to put anything else on top. I think these are absolutely fine. Okay. I would, if I may, Councillor Fielding, I'd concur with that. Just seeing how people use it near where I live, I do accept sometimes you get home from work and you want to go, so I think it's okay in the summer. So on that basis, and if there's any other comments, we are, and we're sub you're, sub you're happy with the conditions, Councillor Richards, we are proposing to grant permission for application 18 slash 01472 slash FUL with the addition of the conditions we've just discussed. Councillor Richards is proposing, it was seconded by Councillor Barnes, as I recall. Though, are you happy with the conditions, Councillor Barnes? Yes. Okay. The conditions are. Yeah. conditions are really relevant. Yes. Agreed. 
So, put it to the vote. All those in favour to grant? Unanimous, Chairman. Then the uh, uh, planning application is passed. The council for, resolves to grant. And the Council resolves to grant planning permission as per we've just set out. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> Right, okay. Uh, our final, I think, item tonight, um, application, well, it's two applications. It's 18016124 and our listed building consent, 1801613 LBC on 198 uh, Ludington Road, Ludington. And if we can hear from the officer, Sean Gardner, on that. Okay, thank you, Chair. So in front of us we have the application site, which is centrally located in the village of Ludington. There's an aerial photo of the site. 198 is a mid-terrace property, Grade 2 listed, located uh, centrally in the village. Um, here we have the block plan. Planning permission is sought to remove an existing lean-to extension and replace it with a, with a single story extension which would attach to, the exist, to an existing um, 1960s extension. It would have a flat roof and bifold doors. And the side elevations which give you an impression of the, of the side obviously of the um, proposal. So turning to the photos, we have the rear of number 198 looking towards number 199 uh, showing the existing lean to which would be removed. Um, here we can see the terrace of the three properties. And here we have a close up of the rear elevation and the area which is to be extended and the lean to which would be removed and replaced by the pro proposed extension. Okay, that is the end of the presentation. Chairman, there are no updates to report and the recommendation is to refuse the application for the reasons stated on page 71 of the agenda paper. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we should now hear from Councillor John Warrender, uh, Chairman of the Parish Council. Lovely. And you have three minutes and I'll give you a 30 second warning. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, councillors. Um, right, so I'm Chair of Lillington Parish Council and here to um, defend the application for this small extension. Um, to reiterate, the Parish Council's support of this proposal, um, it had overwhelming support at the Parish Council meeting. Uh, Ward member Councillor Barnes visited the site and is happy to support this also. The committee report in uh, the application doesn't really include our statement of support in its entirety. As we stated that the use of reclaimed brick and timber and red tiles is to be an important factor in supporting this application, which is in line with the Ludington Village design statement, which was adopted by SDC in June 2018. We can be sticklers with this, so we are supporting this application on those grounds. Other factors are and please bear in mind that this is a rear single storey extension and has no impact on any street scene, parking issues or ecological matters, which therefore accords this with CS6 of the core strategy. Construction traffic will access by the rear and the neighbours are happy with this. The neighbours are, are happy generally with the proposal. Historic England have made no comment. Ecology Department have made no comment. The conservation officer, however, wanted a reduction in size, which has been facilitated by the architect to a level which is now the minimum acceptable to the applicant to make the improvements worthwhile. Both adjoining properties have had similar and larger extensions in the past, 
And although CS8 of the core strategy is quoted as a reason for objection, we would disagree due to the need of modernisation and upgrading of wiring and pipe work included within this proposal, and that there is no substantial harm or loss intended or would be caused by the proposal. These proposals are not for profit, but an increase in amenity, safety, and a reasonable increase in living space within this well-looked-after small cottage. We believe that these benefits would outweigh any harm alluded to within the committee report. In the last paragraphs, you may note of the design visual impact statement, you will see that the officer finds no visual harm arising from design and scale, which accords with adopted policies CS9 and CS20 of the core strategy. In the last paragraph of the neighbouring amenity, amenity statement, the officer notes that no neighbours would be affected and so the development also accords again with policy CS20 of the core strategy. Dunnington Parish Council hope that you will appreciate our involvement by attending this committee meeting and take on board our views when you weigh up the evidence in support of this proposal. Thank 15 seconds, much. lovely, thank you. Uh, any questions? Councillor Organ. Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, the adjoining property, which I think is number 199, now has a six-foot close board fence where the extension is proposed to go when the lean-to goes. So, in effect, it will have a, an impact on that property because the extension will be higher than the six-foot fence. Do you have any comments on that? No, we think that... Okay. Oh, can you use your, your button, please? Sorry. Oh, yeah, and I think we're going on from the... Uh, the direct question was, was simply in your opinion, I think. Okay. Oh, I was going to go on okay. to say that, that if you look at the block plan... Um, which came up at, at, at the beginning. No, that one there, yeah. So any, um, you know, building materials will come in from the back and the neighbours have said that they're happy to accommodate all that. So we, we have no reason to suspect that the neighbours have got any problems at all. Okay, lovely. Any other questions? No, thank you very much. Right, thank you. And now we're going on to uh, Rob Evans, the agent, I think. And, the, and Mr. James Wright, is it? Lovely. Uh, will you both be speaking? Just me. Okay. I'm just answering technical questions. Okay. So, Mr. Wright, is it? Yes. Okay, lovely. So you'll have three minutes. I hope, hope to give you a 30-second warning at the end. Okay. Thank you. So, my name is James Wright. Uh, I'm the owner of 108 Ludington. Uh, just like to take a few minutes to support our application for our small single story extension. So, the, the existing 1960s extension we're proposing to take down and replace is not in keeping with the cottage and in a bad state of disrepair. We'd like to replace this with something that complements the rest of our beautiful cottage. We're great lovers of period houses and history, and we'd like to invest further in this property, enhancing the overall back view of the house, both inside and outside. We believe in investing in older properties and making sure they are fit for everyone to live in and happy in the future for both young and old. The original scheme that was designed in line with the adopted village statement was not acceptable to the conservation officer. The scheme was redesigned on the planning officer's recommendation for a more contemporary approach with more glass and more timber so that it does not compete. The contemporary approach creates a contrast to the existing building as suggested. The conservation officer has agreed to the demolition of the existing 1960s lean-to. This is a later addition, single skin building, completely unsuitable for modern standards of living. The existing flat roof extension built in the 1980s is no architectural merit, is poorly constructed and not energy efficient. This will be upgraded. The new extension is only 2.8 metres by 3 metres wide and attaches onto the footprint of the ex existing extension to provide the space for a modern kitchen, diner and bathroom. 
we've purposely not opted for a two-storey extension to preserve the view of the existing cottage back wall. The neighbouring properties to each side both have large extensions, a one and two-storey high. The proposed layout was put forward due to the site constraints, an existing well and main sewer pipe being one of the reasons why the walls and the size of extension are where they are. We have full support of the Parish Council, we have full support from the ward member. Both neighbours are happy and have in fact been shown the plans and are pleased that the rear of the property can be improved and have a positive impact on their property as well as ours. We have uh, local support and the extension is not visible from any public point of view. Thank you for listening to me and I hope that you can support our proposal. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any questions? Councillor Fielding. Just a matter of interest, you refer to a well. Whereabouts is it? It, it is basically where the hatched area is there. Um, there. It's right in the middle of that. It should actually be with inside the new extension in the floor as a feature. Okay, thank you. That's right. <laughs> yes. Any more? No more questions, I take it. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, technical questions there. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Councillor Barnes. Please forgive me. He's just... It's because you haven't got your dog. <laughs> You've got to bark when he's not with you. You have up to five minutes, Councillor. No, I shan't take that. Um, this is an old property, uh, which really, if you like, uh, you can put the picture on of it, and that, that'll do. Um, you can see where the well is, actually. Um, this is an old property that uh, doesn't want modernising, but it wants to be fit to live in. There isn't the uh, washing facilities that I don't always need, but young people do. Um, and uh, it's an improvement uh, to which, as the parish council have agreed, the neighbours had a look at the application before it went in. They've all agreed with the first application. The conservation architect wasn't over keen on the size. So obviously we've got this application. They've used the material she wanted. They've done everything they want. And I was rather surprised that she's actually reviewed it. There's a lot of support for it. It needs doing. If you go in the building, it, if it, no, I wouldn't say it isn't fit to live in, but what I'm saying is it's old, hasn't been looked after, uh, and as far as I'm concerned, there really isn't any reason for refusal. Uh, if you listen to the parish council, again, um, they said all the words I want to, so I don't see there's any point in me going on in the respect that everybody's happy with it. Uh, it's modest, it's needed, um, and there will be a glass thing over the well and uh, it, it's a lot less uh, inside than the one next door. Thank you very much. Any questions? No? Thank you very much, Councillor. Uh, technical questions? Councillor. So I would just like to ask, so I know in, in the reason for refusal, not of high quality, sensitively designed and integrated. Given the conservation officer is in favour. I am, I suppose, probably a bit like Councillor Barnes, I'm slightly surprised. So could you just amplify why this is not of high quality and you don't think it's sensitively designed, just so, for my benefit? I think, Chair, if I may, first of all, correct Councillor Baudry's question for him. The Conservation Officer is not in favour, Councillor Baudry. It's the Conservation Officer who's driving this report. Um, the, the planning issues you, you heard when the, the Parish Council spoke they went through the planning issues, and at the end of each planning paragraph, we come to a conclusion that it's acceptable in planning terms. It's the conservation issues that are the problem, and, and they're set out for you in the Impact on Heritage Assets section, which starts partway down page 68 and finishes halfway down page 69. And the, the issue, the concern is that this building has a rear elevation, which is partially obscured by a flat roof modern extension and it's partially obscured by a pitched roof modern extension which replaced an earlier extension. That pitched roof modern extension um, is appropriate to the character and style of a building of this age and 
conservation officer has no problem with that. The flat roofed extension the conservation officer considers is unattractive, as I think the applicant does, uh, and is harmful to the character of the building by hiding it. But it's there, it exists. So the conservation officer has suggested that some manner of compromise is available whereby a smaller extension could be acceptable in conservation terms in that it would make the property more habitable but smaller than is currently proposed. That's not acceptable to the applicant. The applicant wishes to go ahead with this current proposal which completely covers that rear elevation of the building, obscures it, makes it not apparent to, to, uh, from the outside of the building uh, and therefore the conclusion is that that is harmful to its character. Sorry, sorry for the long answer, but uh, if you look at the third paragraph down on page 69, that sort of sums it up. Okay, so um, I appreciate the clarification. My mistake when I am, um, when clearly I read it, so uh, thank you for that. Uh, Councillor Organ. Um, could we just have a look at the plan rather than the elevation? In context of the uh, um, adjoining dwellings plan. Thank you. Okay. Um, and my question now is if this is considered to be um, not acceptable, um, but the extensions on either side are probably larger than this as I see it. So where is the harm? The harm is, we're look, well, we're looking at the application to this property. It's accepted that there are modern extensions to the neighbouring properties. That is accepted. And in fact, the conservation officer in their comments has suggested that they don't have any objection in principle to some form of extension. In some ways, though, because this is a terraced property with quite a narrow plot, you're quite constrained with what you can do before you actually disguise the entire rear um, and therefore the sort of historic reading of the, of the dwelling. Um, so it's, I don't know if that answers your question really, but yeah, I mean, there obviously there are modern extensions there and they're accepted, but obviously what we're looking at here is, is this application and in terms of the harm, it is to do with the, the impact on the heritage asset. It is a listed building. Um, those extensions don't, you know, the fact that they, they've been approved, they don't necessarily mean that, um, that this one should. Oh, sorry, Councillor Richards. Thank you. Um, I, I, I suppose I'm sympathetic with Councillor Vaudry's position in that the front page of the report does clearly say conservation team following still the on, plans. Still on questions, yeah? No objection. Yeah. Okay, Councillor. You've destroyed my flow. I'm sorry, sorry, Councillor. On, oh. on the very front page, it does say conservation team following amended plans, no objection. Yet it goes on to say you're telling me that it goes on to say that there is an objection. Is the no objection just, just so I'm clear? The no objection is the principle to development, but there is an objection to the development. <laughs> yes, I, I, I think it, that's somewhat misleading. With, I think. with my answer to Councillor Vaudry. There, there is a compromise position available to which the conservation team would have no objection. That compromise position hasn't been reached and the conservation team object to the application as it stands. So, so okay. for future reference for our benefit, could we have objection on the front rather than no objection written on the front and then objection written on the main pack? Yeah, good, they somewhat they good point. Eyes. Good point. So okay. I think we can end technical questions there, can we? Yeah, uh, so, uh, debate. Oh, okay. Have I did, have sorry, I did, I did have more, but I'd forgotten about it in that. Um, are either 199 or 197 listed in any form? And have they had extensions themselves? It appears to me that 197 has, um, and it abuts 198. One, 197 certainly has. I think that's obvious from the photos. That's been extended. Um, 199... I couldn't, Shh. they have been extended, yeah. Fine, don't worry, that's fine. Can, can I offer and one further gratuitous piece of information, Chairman, if I may? Um, my, my understanding is that the properties were listed 
after 197 had been extended. Uh, okay. I, I'm not quite sure if that's particularly relevant as we're looking at this application, and that's been covered. In, yeah. Uh, and are both 197 and 199 listed as well? They are, yes. Yeah. Okay. No more questions? Okay, good. Would you like to start us off? Councillor Organ. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm passionate about um, historic buildings and making sure that they are preserved in the best way that they can be. And I think if you looked at this from the street scene, what you see is a row of terraced cottages uh, from the front elevation um, that is what it is. The back, however, is a completely different kettle of fish. There have been different extensions at different times, and um, it's a question of what is proposed, is it going to be more harmful than what is there already? And I can't see that that is, that is the, the situation. So I would propose that uh, to actually grant this application um, and you've just given the reason that you don't see there's any, um, any harm to the And I think it's policies CS9 and CS20, is it? So I don't really... I would like some guidance on that. <laughs> CS8, is it? Yep. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we have a proposal. Uh, Councillor Richards. Richards, thank you. Thanks, mate. You know, we've only known it for five years. <laughs> Um, I'm going to agree um, and second Councillor Organ's proposal um, on the basis that, and in a similar way that I, I, I think it's a great shame to lose what is a really quite attractive um, rear elevation of the, the house, the bits on the right. That 60s extension is pretty grotty and when looking at 197, you've got a red brick extension at the top and then a 60s extension underneath. Am I disturbing something? a 60s extension underneath, it almost feels like that's the forgotten bit, forgotten element of that entire elevation. And I think it'd be a great shame for just to let this opportunity go. I don't see that it causes significant harm. If anything, actually, I think it enhances the setting of that back elevation of all 197, 198, 199. Great. That was a, and that was a seconding, wasn't it? Yeah. Sorry, can you give us some, uh, yeah, we some guidance? Need, uh, Chair, we just need some. At the end, if, if we go that way. Okay, yes. Uh, Councillor Fielding. I agree with my, <coughs> my colleagues, I think. Quite honestly, it needs the back, it needs to be, in, the house needs to be enlarged to make it into a habitable unit. And what's there at the moment needs to be improved. And by doing what is pr in, um, put forward is, is in my Basically, it's a good scheme. Okay. No others? Uh, so we need, if we go for this, what conditions are we talking about? Can we have some suggestions? I would suggest standard three-year time limit, um, submission of material samples, and in accordance with plans, in accordance with plans large care details. It's quite standard on. Uh, okay. Well. So we're happy with that. You're happy with that? Sorry, Chair, if I may, but to be agreed with you tomorrow. Okay, to be agreed. Yeah. yeah, lovely. Councillor Fielding? It's just that I feel that the, 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 the car parking should be around the back, not brought through the front of the building. Yeah, it won't be. No. Okay, so all those, uh, we have a proposal and a seconder to grant application for the reasons given with uh, conditions to be agreed uh, with the Chair later. Uh, all those in favour? Unanimous, Chairman. Lovely, thank you. So we have resolved grant. Okay, with that, okay, we've, we've, that was for the full application, was for the full application 18016124, I'm presuming we can have a, a proposer and a seconder for <laughs> the listed builder consent with the same reasons and conditions, all those in favour? Good, thank you. And are, are there any... Oh, sorry, I have to say that as well. Council has resolved to grant planning permission for 1801613 LBC as well. Uh, now, is there any other business or urgent business? No, so thank you very much. Thank you.